This week in AI, we are only talking about Apple Intelligence launched at WWDC. There were a lot of updates this week, including Stability AI releases a sound generator, Asana is launching AI teammates to work alongside humans, Mistral AI raised a 640 million Series B round, and Meta adds AI-powered tools for businesses in WhatsApp. But the biggest was the announcement of Apple Intelligence, and there's so much to unpack here. Before we get started, I know you guys all came back to hear my dad joke, so I can't leave you hanging. That would be really inconsiderate of me. If you see somebody robbing an Apple store, are you considered an eyewitness? I know, that's the whole reason why you came. The only advancement for this week, Apple Intelligence is launched. Apple's highly anticipated WWDC took place on Monday, unveiling feature updates such as the new macOS Sequoia, tap to cache, which is similar to Venmo, but between devices. But the biggest, of course, is their major AI announcement. It's personal intelligence right where you need it. Writing tools are an example of the incredible power of Apple intelligence. Say you're writing an email. You can change the tone to make it sound more friendly, professional, or concise. Next up, Image Playground. Create awesome images in seconds. Just type rooftop and any other descriptive words, and it generates the image in the middle playground area. Siri takes a huge step forward and is now supercharged by Apple intelligence. And when you talk to Siri, you'll notice this elegant glowing light around the edge of your screen that shows Apple intelligence working for you. With natural language, you can speak to Siri more naturally, thanks to richer language understanding capabilities. What's our dinner plan? And Siri knows you mean you and your mom and will find that information in a text she sent you. What makes Apple's announcement so different with their launch in their products? Well, in my opinion, it is by far the most advanced AI architecture for data privacy protection that exists and sets a new standard. Let's start with how it works. Apple traditionally has had a strict on-device first policy for data privacy protection, and while they built an AI infrastructure to try to have AI models run on devices as much as possible through Apple Silicon, Apple Intelligence leverages both on-device and cloud computing models. Since foundation models are pushing what can be done on device because of their size, this was something that was probably unavoidable. Let's first take a look at their on-device infrastructure and training strategy used for both their LLM and their diffusion model. Step one, Apple started out their infrastructure by choosing an LLM that could run on device, choosing based on specialization, size, and performance. From there, they moved to step two, which was the training process in two halves. First, traditional fine tuning, conducting multiple training passes on the model to specialize it in specific tasks, such as text summarization, proofreading, quality handling, email replies, urgency, friendliness, and more. After traditional fine tuning, Apple adopted a new approach to fine tuning using a technique called adapters. Adapters are a small set of model weights that overlay onto the common base foundation models and can be dynamically loaded and swapped, allowing the base model to specialize on the fly for different tasks. Their third step involved compressing the model, reducing the model size to fit on devices by compressing it from 16 bits per parameter to less than four bits per parameter, ensuring it could run on Apple devices while maintaining its quality. And the last focused on inference performance, optimizing models to minimize the time required to process a prompt and generate a response. Now, despite their impressive efforts to do what they could on device, the full powers of LLMs and foundation models in general can't be harnessed on a single device. And with Apple intelligence, they have moved away from their strict on device policy, extending Apple intelligence to the cloud with a new infrastructure called private cloud compute to run the large models. To address data privacy concerns with cloud computing, their new system extends Apple's privacy protections to servers designed for private AI processing. How it works, the system runs on a new operating system with no permanent data storage or remote access, like through a remote shell, which prevents unauthorized data access and includes a complete machine learning stack for the actual execution of AI tasks. The system also protects important encryption keys and verifies the identity of a private cloud cluster or instance before sending requests. All of this is established through an end-to-end -end encrypted connection to a user's private cloud compute instance and ensures that only your private cloud instance can decrypt the request data. The data is not stored after the request is processed and therefore not accessible to Apple or anyone. 
So now that we understand the on-device infrastructure as well as the cloud compute infrastructure, how do they all work together to bring us Apple intelligence? Step one, when the request comes through, Apple intelligence orchestrates and decides which model to use, whether it be on-device model or the cloud models through your private cloud compute. Then it leverages your personal intelligence stored on device, not on the cloud, in order to help aid with execution. Utilizing your personal intelligence system, again, stored on device, it includes an on-device semantic index, organizing personal information across your apps to provide personal context, and also uses an app intense toolbox that helps Apple Silicon to understand the parameters and capabilities of apps and can access them on your behalf. They also announced at the end an opening eye partnership, which the details of that is a little unclear at this time. The biggest announcement leveraging Apple intelligence is that Siri has officially entered a new era. Siri is now more deeply connected to how you use your devices and has officially entered a useful era of personal agents after all of these years. It has had a complete redesign with an elegant glowing light around the screen when it's listening and you're interacting with it. Plus, with on-screen awareness and accessing your personal context, again, stored on device, Siri can now comprehend and act on your behalf with an app. You can now ask it to send your friends photos from a barbecue last weekend, ask it to find an article your friends sent you last week, and even can write to your device like updating a contact card on your behalf. Ultimately, WWDC announced significant enhancements around Siri, and you should watch the full video to really see it in action. If you've been with me since last month, you wouldn't be surprised though by this news because of the research paper we covered about the new model before all of this announced that helped enhance Siri's capabilities. My initial thoughts, because everyone here knows how crazy I am about data privacy, brace yourselves. What I'm about to say is going to shock you. In my opinion, this is by far the most advanced AI architecture for data privacy protection that exists for the everyday user. Everyone was scared and not sure what to do with the information of AI being embedded into Apple devices. So I brought in a friend of mine who is the head of engineering at a company creating AI synthetic training data who has studied this concept of confidential cloud computing for the last year. Anderson, so great to see you. You have quite the impressive background, former CTO of Taos, currently the head of software and data engineering for a company focused on creating AI synthetic training data based in Amsterdam. And we all saw the internet blowing up, criticizing Apple, including Elon Musk, sharing some very sharp words concerned about <laughs> data privacy. He put on this PSA on LinkedIn, basically telling everyone to take a breath. You do believe Apple's claims because their infrastructure is not completely a new concept. What is your opinion of the launch of Apple Intelligence and uh, tapping into this newer concept for us of private cloud compute? When I saw the whole uh, thing that came out from, from Apple and the reaction of everyone, I was like, well, yeah, I think it's fair, the reaction, but uh, maybe it's a bit too much yeah. because I have been looking into this uh, confidential computing quite, totally by chance, by coincidence. And I have a strong belief that, uh, yes, they are they, they want to be able to actually see the data. The data is going to be uh, encrypted even at use, mm -hmm. which I think is the last uh, mile for having full privacy, even when your data is out of your um, premises, let's say. Uh, you need to take my word with a grain of salt because you never know, right? When these companies are going to go evil. No, know. it's true. <laughs> I mean, and, and they're also not storing any of the data after the fact, which is really huge. And But from what I'm seeing, this is really the first time a company has done this to protect users, like individual data on this scale, right? Because I mean, most of the time we're just the ants that nobody cares about. And, you know, they're just using us to fuel the data. I feel like the OpenAI announcement was one of the smallest parts, but everyone has hinged on to that. You know, they're thinking exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. They, there is a huge market that the cloud haven't tapped yet, mm -hmm. which the markets, let's say, from uh, health companies. These companies still keep their data on premise because it's too sensitive data. Mm -hmm. And what happens in the cloud computing is that uh, the host, so some engineer at Amazon or AWS or Google, 
if they want, they can still connect to the virtual machines that are running and see what is in the memory of those machines if they want. So these companies just don't trust in go to the cloud because they don't know what is going to happen there. They can't guarantee that. But the confidential computing is coming to actually solve this problem, to make the market for the cloud um, uh, providers even bigger because there are a lot of data that is still is not being processed there. I didn't think about the fact that this is actually a huge, I mean, there's always a push between on-prem into cloud, but this actually could push a lot of those companies that are scared to do that onto a private cloud instance. It's similar to what Apple's doing. The infrastructure that Apple specifically implemented prevented remote access through like a PowerShell or something, which is also, you know, similar yes. to what saying, which is huge. Nobody can really access the data. Apple can't access the data. It's not being stored. You don't have like remote access, which is quite impressive because this confidential computer uh, solutions that you have now from Intel, from AMD, from NVIDIA, you still need to have like, let's say the drivers in the operational system to be able to talk to that chip and make it this happens. So still, you have a small bit of layer there that can be compromised for these ones. But Apple seems that went a little further in this. So yeah, it looks interesting. Coming from me, I'm really excited <laughs> to leverage AI within Apple products. And I'm not so concerned at the very least. I know they're the best one in terms of data privacy out there at this point. This type of situation balancing between on-device SLMs, LLMs, and leveraging cloud compute when we need it. I mean, you're not getting that anywhere else right now as a normal user. Maybe if you're part of a company that can invest in that kind of infrastructure for its employees, that's one thing, but you know, not as just Veronica Hylak. Uh, Apple has this thing that they charge for everything. So you most, most of the time you are not the product, right? So yeah, they are going to charge for this. Well, I was actually wondering that what the increase of cost is going to be for maybe iCloud users to yeah. leverage this. Because I, that was a thought that I'm I had about an hour or two ago, because <laughs> is that going to be baked into the cost of you know, the phone, I mean, on the on, on the device makes sense, but to access the this cloud compute in this, that's going to cost Apple a lot of money. So where is that going to be passed to? One thing that is, I think, in US is a little uh, contradictory with everything. There is this thing called a third party doctrine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know. So it's like when you give your data, yeah, mm -hmm. spontaneously, you don't have right to, for privacy. Mm -hmm. And I think it, this is where these companies may be based their uh, actions. But uh, yeah, I think it's still with Apple since that we have like a, a, a company that is going the, in the other way. So, you know, I feel great about it. Honestly, I'm really excited to step for data privacy. So Apple intelligence may look to many to be a boring infrastructure update that no one really cares about. But in reality, Apple took the first major step to protect you. The truth is, I believe Apple is the first big tech company to really focus on protecting our data at this scale. If you know me, that is an endorsement I do not give lightly. And that's it for this week. I'll see you all next time. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm happy to answer anything that you have.